From Maranatha Christian Academy in Brooklyn Park, we proudly present another edition of High School Girls Basketball. A high-powered showdown awaits us tonight as the defending 3A champions pay a visit to last year's runner-up in Class A. The Maranatha Christian Academy Mustangs open their season against the Holy Angels Stars. Greetings everyone, Mike Peden here with Alex Nagel. And Alex, this is a dream showdown in the early part of the season. It really is, and, and who, would, who would have expected it, Mike? And you know, when you stand back and you take a look at this game, there's really a lot of similarities with these teams. Of course, both of these teams had fabulous showings at the state tournament last year. Holy Angels winning the Class 3A field and Maranatha making it to the title game in the Class A field. And both lost dynamic players with Maranatha Christian, Elena Jarnot to graduation, and with Holy Angels, Laura Bagwell Catalinic to graduation. But yet, both coaches feel that they have enough players coming back where they can make big runs this year. This actually is the second year of a home and home series between the two schools. And for Maranatha, they've waited a week and a half to get the season going. It was by design, in the words of Chris Bierman. And what a way to start the season. They're going to find out just what they're made of. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. And I asked Chris Berman uh, beforehand after I got here, and I asked him, what do you feel like coming in tonight? And he said, well, we're well-fed, under-conditioned, and warm. So how much that means, I don't know. But I think this team is really ripping and roaring and ready to go. And I think we'll see him come out on fire here tonight. And they have a lot of players to help them catch fire. Jacqueline Jarnett returns. In fact, four of their five starters from last year's team are back. And the new face on the starting lineup is a hero last year, Jasmine Thompson. Yeah. She got that put back bucket to beat Mountain Iron Buell in the Class A semifinal. That was quite a game. And she was just happened to be in the right place at the right time and made the most of that opportunity. You know, you talk about this Maranatha team. They're very experienced, of course. Jacqueline Jarnett, she's so versatile. She can, she'll be at the point guard position. But really, Chris Berman thinks that she can cycle through all five positions. So that gives you an idea of how really versatile and how good she really is. And speaking of Holy Angels, we used the term baby face veterans on our last broadcast when they beat Tatino Grace. And that's the case. Even the coaching staff would agree with that. They're 3-0, a bevy of high-quality wins coming off, a grueling two-point win over Minnehaha Academy, and it's a young group, but that experience and poise is showing in the first few games of the season. I had a chance to speak with assistant coach Gary Ruffsfold uh, during the uh, Thanksgiving tournament over at St. Thomas, and I asked him you know, what his thoughts were going into this season, and he told me that he feels that they can be better than what they were last year. They won't have that one dynamic player that they had with Laura Bagwell Katalinic, but the returning players that they have, you know, they're more experienced now. They've got that state title under their belt, and they think they have enough parts in play where they can get a lot more people involved from a scoring standpoint. We're looking forward to seeing the fireworks that are about to take place here in Brooklyn Park. While the starting lineups in a moment, you're watching high school girls basketball. I pray, God, that you would bless these young ladies tonight. Lord, keep them safe, keep them free from injury, help them to play with the very best ability that they can. I pray, God, that you would bless us as fans, to help us to be just that, to be fanatic for our kids, to be positive, not negative. I pray, God, that you bless the referees, to help them to see things as they are, not just as they appear. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Please understand this. <laughs>
And welcome back to Maranatha Christian Academy in Brooklyn Park. And I want to let our entire viewing audience know Alex, despite being a Brooklyn Park native, is making his first visit to Maranatha Christian Academy. And Alex, all I have to ask you is, what took you so long to get here? Well, I, 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 it's kind of funny, Mike. Uh, it's surprising it took me that long, but I'm glad I'm here. Let's take a look at the starting five. For the visiting Holy Angel Stars, it's Megan Thompson, number 11, the senior guard. Number 21, Megan Meyer, the junior guard. Number 22, Kaylee Vanderwerf, the freshman forward. Number 23, Destiny Oberg, the sophomore forward. And number 30, Riley Talhuber, the junior guard. Maranatha will start. Jacqueline Jarnett, number one, the junior forward. Jasmine Thompson, number five, the junior guard. Kylie Post, number 10, the junior guard. Elise Moore, number 11, the senior forward. And Sammy Payne, number 15, the senior forward. This is the first of just nine home games for the Maranatha Christian Academy Mustangs. Barring the MCAA Conference Tournament, of course, but another intent in the scheduling from Chris Bierman, and he noted the reason for the lack of home games compared to previous years, Maranatha has a high win percentage at home, and he feels if he really wants to prepare this team for state, he wants to get them at more neutral site and road games where you face more hostile environments. Mike, I tell you, the one matchup I'm really looking forward to here tonight is how they try to control Destin Ober, Ober of Holy Angels. I mean, with her size, she's going to be really tough to contain down low in the paint. Another thing you'll notice in the case of Maranatha, new jerseys. The red jerseys you are seeing now are their new alternate uniforms. They still have their standard home black and road white, but Chris Bierman. I'm glad and the you rest pointed of that out. I never <laughs> noticed that. Well, he wanted to reflect the history that Maranatha's had. Of course, they won a pair of state titles in 2011 and 2012, and they were runner-ups the last couple of years. And they were due for new uniforms. Every high school cycles through jerseys every two to three years, and he felt, let's add a third jersey that reflects our history. We'll see if they continue wearing it. I imagine tonight's outcome may have an influence on how often we see the red uniforms. Holy Angels wearing their standard road whites. Maranatha wins the tip and we're underway. Maranatha's season is underway. Holy Angels looking to continue on their 3-0 start. And that pass is deflected. No, it was not a deflection, so it's a turnover on the Mustangs. It's cheerleader night here at Maranatha. And, al and already the uh, Mustangs showing some full and half court pressure here. Chris Berman said he wasn't going to be afraid to do that. Ooh. Vanderwerf, the transfer from Burnsville. Now Oberg will fire a long two. And that goes off the rim. Battle for the rebound won by Megan Meyer. And Holy Angels will reset. Ober backs off. She's closing in on 1,000 career points. This is her fourth year of varsity competition. She started as a seventh grader. And that's going to be a foul on Thompson, Jasrin Thompson. And in the case of Holy Angels, Joe Berg and the rest of the staff, their philosophy is if you're good enough and you're eligible, they're not afraid to put you on varsity. And so that's why you see a lot of youth on this team. Hard to believe that she's just a sophomore. Oberg has an opening. She'll attack, come up short. Gets on rebound though. Payne almost rips it away. Tal Huber, that's short. Elise Moore picks it up. Gets it off to Kylie Post. And Maranatha struggling a little bit. Meyer fires off the mark. Vanderwerf, oh board, can't put it in. Well, both teams missing out on some easy early opportunities here, Mike. 
perhaps some jitters considering the magnitude of this matchup. Moore almost threw it away. Jarnett got in there for the recovery. Thompson goes to Payne, and she can't hit the baseline. But Thompson left alone. No, Moore throws it up, and she'll shoot two. Good job under there by Moore. Elise Moore, member of multiple organizations here at Maranatha, including National Art Society, Book Club, and she's also trilingual, fluent in three languages. That's pretty good. I was just going to say good job by Moore standing strong there in the paint, going up for that offensive rebound, and now a chance here at the charity stripe to get the points, first points on the board here. And she does. Here's another thing about Elise that will impress you. Her backup plan, backup mind you, is to go to MIT or Johns Hopkins. She's looking to get at an Ivy League school. Wow. Even if it means giving up basketball. But how many students do you know that have MIT listed as a backup option? Not many. She scores our first points of the game. There's Megan Thompson. And Holy Angels commits a turnover. Well, some awfully strong man-to-man -man defense shown here early by the Mustangs. And as you noted, Chris Bierman said he wasn't going to fool anybody. Maranatha's the team that likes to press. And remember, these two teams are familiar with each other. Holy Angels won last year's matchup, 84-68. Jarnett missing the three. Rebound, Tal Huber. Holy Angels looking for the run out. They won't get it. Hallberg, bounce pass, jump ball. Well, a good bounce pass under there by Olberg. She saw the opening that Meyer had. She just couldn't, couldn't get enough room to put up the shot. Hallberg goes up, banks it in. Destiny Oberg has impressed a lot of people since he started her varsity career. And we got a foul on Maranatha. It's charged to Moore. Riley Talhuber, who's inbounding the ball. She's the daughter of Jen Zeller, who you might remember if you're a diehard Gophers fan. Zeller playing for the University of Minnesota back in the early 1990s. Oberg broke free. Elise Moore took a tumble. And that might be the easiest basket Oberg has all season. I'll tell you what, Mike. Once Oberg posts up, she's so incredibly hard to stop. Tal Huber unable to hook up on the fast break possession and Maranatha catches a break. Jazrin Thompson the hero of the semifinal round in the Class A tournament a year ago. Getting the put back basket at the buzzer to beat Mountain Iron Buell. Draining the runners Kylie Post. Thompson out to Meyer. Jarnett closes in on her quickly. Lobs it over to Oberg. And Moore, wondering how it went off her leg. Asking now, about it, but not getting a sufficient explanation, I guess. Oberg. In trouble. Needs help. And that pressure defense of Maranatha forces another turnover. 14-21 left in the first half. 4-4 four, four our score. Post. Maranatha throws it away. A few more turnovers here early on than what Chris Berman would like, I can assure you, Mike.
Semi Payne with the interception. She doesn't have breakaway speed, but she'll pull up from 15 and hit. And that's Maranatha's bread and butter right there. Chris Bierman expects Sammy Payne will likely average a double-double this year. Talhuber, long two, swish. Riley Talhuber, who also plays softball for the Stars, and we have a foul. And one of our new camera guys, Ray, getting close to the action. The foul's charge to Kylie Post, her first. 6-6. Six, six. And wow. one. Not scripted, but it pays off for Megan Meyer. Meyer, part of the volleyball team that reached their first state tournament in school history. Nice way to follow up on the first state tournament title in 41 years for the basketball team. Well, Dan Woods feels that Megan Meyer is underrated in her shooting ability, but she showed right there that she can shoot the ball. She got the opening, got the offensive rebound, and made the most of it. Well, she caught a deflection. Again, unscripted, but put it in and got the three-point play out of it, so you'll take it. And to continue your point about her shooting ability, she hit several threes to help overcome a 14-point deficit in the semifinal round last year against Thief River Falls in the 3A tournament. Oberg forcing a steal there. Oberg, back door, but too strong for Megan Meyer. Jarnett, the lob. Talhuber gets in there for the deflection. Our first subs are coming in. Number 13 for the Mustangs. That's Ella Berg. And number 42 for Holy Angels, Emma Mastre. Berg for three. Too strong. And Jarnett blew a layup. Oberg tipped it right to her, and Jarnett was too strong. It is their first game of the season, though. And Oberg lost the dribble. Kylie Post, one on one with Thompson. Can't beat her. But the follow through is there for number 25. Kayla Joe Davis, one of the new faces for the Mustangs. And a timeout has been called by Maranatha. Well, turnovers proving to be costly here for Holy Angels. On well, both sides, really. There have been a lot of sloppy miscues again, though, well, Maranatha in their first game of the year. And, you know, you talk about that missed basket by Jarnett down there on the other end, other end here just a moment ago. You know, I'm sure there's a few jitters that players on both sides need to work out. One thing Chris Bierman is looking for this year is a stronger outside presence with this Maranatha team. Last year they did a lot of inside scoring. And this year he feels not only is this team deeper, but there are also more perimeter options. Yeah. And when, consider this to start the season. They get Holy Angels tonight. On Thursday they go to Montemidi, a team on the rise in 3A. Saturday they continue their annual series with Mountain Iron Buell making the road trip up north. Next Tuesday they'll get St. Croix Lutheran. Becoming uh, well-traveled like my uh, Los Angeles Rams. I don't know if they'll cross state lines, but... <laughs> <laughs> a very grueling start to the schedule. Wow! Megan Thompson has a chance for three. The old-fashioned way. What a drive and finish by Megan Thompson. And she did that in traffic too, Mike. And when she's not playing basketball, she plays the clarinet. And in the first trimester, a scholar of distinction. That means a GPA of over 4.0, for those of you not familiar with Holy Angels.
played a point guard role last year, so sacrificed scoring. They're looking for Thompson to get more offense on her own this year. Sophia Montgomery on the floor for the Mustangs, number 30. This is her first game back since an ankle injury. She misses the three. And bodies everywhere. Kayla Joe can't put it in. And Maranatha can't save it. Well, Holy Angels seemingly getting the better of it on the rebounding side anyway. Vanderwerf up and in. Vanderwerf, Vanderwerf transferring from Burnsville, but doing so as an eighth grader, so she was eligible to switch schools without sitting out a year. Jarnett will shoot two. One element that Chris Bierman believes fans of Maranatha and others will see out of Jacqueline Jarnett this year is her court vision. You didn't see much of it in her first couple of years because she was receiving a lot of Elena Jarnett's passes. Now she has to step into those shoes and make it happen for the other players. And I'm sure that's not an easy transition to do, Mike. Also appreciates how much stronger she has become. She splits there. Wouldn't be surprising to see Jacqueline among the leaders in rebounds like she has the last couple of years. Three on the way from Mastery, that's short. And there's a rebound from Jarnett. Payne, couldn't handle it. Vanderwerf dishes off to Tal Huber. Too far underneath, but Vanderwerf is there for the cleanup. And getting Vanderwerf into this roster was vital for the Stars in terms of their identity. I'll explain that in a minute. Tal Huber will shoot two. Getting in there on the defensive play for the Stars was number 34. Rachel Kowicki. Well, the Angels finding, starting to find their groove here on offense, Mike, both in, in half court and in transition. Tal Huber, an underrated rebounder, in the words of the coaching staff. She picked up 18 rebounds in the two-point win over Minnehaha Academy a few days ago. Also an all-conference softball player. Tallheber splits. And the Stars have built an eight-point lead, 17-9. Megan Meyer back into the game now for Holy Angels as well. Another deflection. Another steal. This time it goes to number 32, Isabel Henry, one of the Henry twins. It'll stay with Holy Angels, but all the faces you're seeing are indicative of the increased depth for Holy Angels this yeah. year. Last year's varsity group, or I should say the program as a whole, had 22 players. This year, they bumped that figure to 35. And I'm sure a state championship helped attract a few folks. Oberg, spin move too far underneath, though. Maranatha having trouble controlling the rebound, and Kawicki rips it away. Meyer has a lane. She can't put it in. Holy Angels wins another scramble. And a traveling violation on Megan Thompson. And the Mustangs trying to pull out, pull out all the stops, trying to get the defensive stop there. 
Wow. And we're going the other way. A foul was called, and, and Maranatha and well was, in the penalty. And it is on Elena Jarnut, her first. I didn't see, quite see from my angle what she did. And because it was before the inbound play, free throws will be awarded here, so Megan Thompson has a chance to add to the Holy Angels' lead. And a costly sequence of events here for Maranatha. Not that costly, though, as Thompson misses the front end. Which means Maranatha escapes the jam for now. High lob. Easy pickings for Kowicki. Oh, Sammy Payne! What, what a block! Sammy Payne did that. Payne bringing the pain on defense. And she'll get the finish. She won't win any sprint races, but that was a huge momentum swing for the my, Mustangs. My goodness, she came out of nowhere to get that. And here's an interception by Jarnett. D Payne on the deflection. Jarnett, no, follows through and gets the put back. Jarnett with her first field goal, and Maranatha cuts the deficit to four in a hurry. Long two is good from Isabel Henry. Maranatha on another run out. Oberg playing some good defense there. And wide open is Megan Meyer. We saw this in the Tatino Grace game. Holy Angels thrives on the transition. Whoa! Moore almost got hit with traveling. Things are getting wild down low. She kicks out. Payne, that's a travel. Things definitely got a little out of control there, Mike. I'll tell you what. Where's your pulse now? How how many beats per minute did it go up by? <laughs> I think I'm up to 150. <laughs> 901 left in the first half, 21-13. And that's a foul. Maranatha continuing their aggressive defense, but the risk associated with that is fouling, and now more free throws coming for the Stars. And Isabel's twin, Emma Henry, taking the floor. Emma Henry scored nine points in the win over Minnehaha. And another empty possession for the Stars. Moore goes baseline, kicks out to Payne. Passes a little strong though. And Payne throws it right into the hands of Emma Henry. But here comes the full court press, and Oberg bumps Payne. What a quick reaction, though, from Payne to make up for that miscue. Absolutely. And you know, I think just as important, you're beginning to see glimpses of what Maranatha Christian can do on defense. They can create such havoc out there that it's really hard for a team to get settled down. And defense is an intangible that has improved immensely over the last couple of years. A couple years ago when you had Lexi Lee on this team, yeah. Maranatha was offensively oriented. They were only going to beat you if they could outscore you. Right. And last year's state tournament run, even though they finished second, they came from behind early in the first half. No foul called. Maranatha came back from a 10-point deficit early to beat Southwest Minnesota Christian in a convincing win. Another leak out. Megan Meyer all alone again. Out there cherry picking and she made the most of it. 
Maranatha a little out of control here down low. Semi Payne hits the tray. And a much needed basket for the Mustangs. Vanderwerf weaves through and scores. Such a versatile player. She's up to six. Elise Moore fires. Too strong. Tal Huber picks it up. Here comes the full court press again. And Maranatha has a couple of bodies in back. Just in case Holy Angels tried to break it. But after a slow start, we're getting some flow between these two teams. Oberg can't get the finger roll. No foul called there. Jarnett goes to Moore. And Maranatha finally gets a fast break play down. That's the first field goal for Elise Moore. Meyer left alone, short on the three. Rebound going to Emma Henry. Jarnett on the block, and it was last touched by Vanderwerf. Maranatha will take over. Good stop there for the Mustangs, Mike. Down seven here with just under seven minutes left, so they're staying right in striking distance. And now it's important for them to make the most of the opportunities they get on the offensive end. And it gives us a chance to catch our breath. <laughs> Traveling violation on Kayla Joe Davis. And again, Maranatha's first game of the year. And Alex and I brought this up several times in our tip-off coverage at St. Thomas. Your first game of the year, you're going to be a little sloppier than you will be in March. Trust me, Chris Berman will get those mistakes cleaned up before January. Oh, no worries about that. Maranatha, they'll be polished come playoff time. A foul on the least more, and that, I believe, is her second. Two free throws automatically here for Kaylee Vanderwerf. So Vanderwerf, we mentioned, adds another big body in the post. An six, element. 6-1 and only a freshman, my goodness. And those big Long post players are a critical element to the Holy Angels' identity. So they were really glad to pick her up. Also plays track and volleyball. The Holy Angels coaching staff really appreciates her wingspan and her speed. They expect her to get better as the season moves along. She splits there. Holy Angels just four of eight from the free throw line. And now Holy Angels showing a little full court press. There's Davis out to Montgomery. Montgomery, as we noted earlier, injured her ankle in the state tournament. Davis throws it away. Scramble for the ball. Here comes Thompson. She backs off. And a foul on Montgomery. So Thompson will shoot another pair. I don't think Chris Beerman will be happy with the fouls his team has committed. But no. on the upside, his, his team is so deep, nobody's in foul trouble yet outside of Elise Moore. And ho go ahead, Alex. I was just going to say, you know, you talk about Holy Angels. You know, consider, Mike, that this is a program that had three different coaches in the period from 2009 to 2012. There was never any sense of continuity, and the players couldn't get used to any one system. And then when finally when Dan Woods took the reins there at Holy, at, uh, Holy Angels, you've seen how this program has turned around. You read my mind I was going to bring that up. And Dan Woods, Joe Berg, and the rest of the Holy Angels staff firmly believe that stability provided a foundation to their state tournament title last year. They were confident that they could win it, even though we were all looking at Orno and Hutchinson and the like. There's another steal. Thompson comes up short. But she gets the ball right back. Elena Erickson couldn't handle the rebound, and Holy Angels catches a break. 
No, it's a foul the other way. Oh, I almost thought it was. It looked like it was a foul of Maranatha yeah. from what we saw, but the officials have the better vantage point than we do. So Mustang, Thompson charged with a foul. Mustangs definitely dodge a bullet there. Semi Payne for three. Not that time. And Tall Huber wins the battle for the rebound there. Once again, Maranatha applying the trap. Frankie Vasilero blocked by Payne. Picks it up, can't put it in. And another foul. I think the one thing that surprises me so far, Mike, is that I've been waiting for, a, for Jacqueline Jarna to kind of take control of things on offense, and I really haven't seen that yet. Now, and the beauty of this Maranatha team is that she doesn't necessarily have to. Jump ball, Mustangs with the arrow. 5.22 remaining. And to finish up on our Holy Angels discussion, Joe Berg in his seventh season with the Stars, Dan Woods has been here for five years. Another jump, we're going the other way. But he was confident that his team could win state last year as he felt they played well against the likes of Hutchinson, Cass, and Manorville. Holy Angels will go to Hutchinson next week. What should be another great 3A primer, a potential preview in this year's state tournament. Wow. A charge was called, and Tal Huber can only laugh it off. She was certainly perplexed by that ruling. As was I. 5.13 that's, left. And that's two fouls now on Foul Huber. That also means Holy Angels is out of fouls to give. Five thirteen left in the first half, and a total of 21 players have taken the floor in this game. Jarnett, top of the key. That goes over the backboard, so a dead ball rebound to Holy Angels. Didn't get the friendly bounce. I wonder if those, those rims seem a bit tight, and that's probably why the ball bounced off the top of the glass there. Oberg bounces over to Thompson. Nice play there. And now Maranatha has a lane. Jacqueline Jarnick recovers in time for the score. Give credit to Smestad and Moore on that last play. Moore doesn't get the charge call, but they force another turnover. Smestad can't finish, though. Dan Woods telling his team to leak out. Vanderwerf. Oh, couldn't recover the pass, but she will get two free throws. The foul will be charged to Ella Bird. I kept looking for a, a charge call down there, Mike. Instead, Destiny Oberg escapes the jam. Vanderwerf averaging seven points per game through three games this season for the Stars. And in practice, she'll often play with and against Ober. You know, you just look at this Holy Angels roster and you see all the young players and you can see how the future is so bright for the Stars program. The free throws leave a little more to be desired. Holy Angels to 6 of 12. Jacqueline Jarnett had to use the dribble, and that may have messed her up. And again, passing not quite as crisp as we expect out of Maranatha, something that will improve as the season moves along. And a traveling violation on Meyer. Well, Megan Meyer definitely got the worst of it there. She got hit on the nose inadvertently. 
and then got called for the travel after that. There was no call following the contact. Maranatha throws it away. 3.50 left in the first half. 28-20 our score. Yeah, and you know, you have to think with all the turnovers that the Mustangs have been guilty of, plus the easy, two easy missed shots down there. You have to figure at some point Chris Berman might be reaching for the sand tack here before the night's out. Vassalero, the bounce pass over to Isabel Henry, and Vanderwerf can't hit for 15. Jarnett on the run out. Maranatha with numbers, and Jarnett can't finish, and a foul on Holy Angel, or Maranatha. Oh. Well, Maranatha hanging in there by eight points here with just a little over 3.30 left here in this first half, Mike. So far, they've been able to withstand these chargers here by the Stars, but you wonder how long that can last. If they don't pick up their offensive efficiency, Holy Angels could run away with this. Sammy Payne back in the ball game now for the Mustangs. Van Dorf makes both free throws, unofficially I've got her at 10. Maranatha having trouble again. We talk about their pressure defense, Holy Angels doing a great job at frustrating Maranatha's offensive sets. Montgomery skips to Jarnett, who drains the triple. Jarnett up to eight. I tell you, Jacqueline Jarnett, what you have to appreciate about her, Mike, is that she's got such a soft touch out there in the perimeter. Thompson to Vanderwerf, and she's too high. Too high again. But Holy Angels will maintain the possession. And here come Tal Huber and Oberg. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Mike, the Stars definitely getting the best of it on the rebound in front. And Maranatha has to find a way to box out and keep, prevent all those offensive rebounds that Holy Angels is getting. Much like we saw in the Totino Grace game. Offensive foul. No free throws for Maranatha because it's a team control foul, but in a way, it's more helpful than the steal because yeah. they get the second foul in on Oberg. Jacqueline Jarner will go to the bench. Brianna Smestab will take her place. Payne. Too low. And that's the third foul on Elise Moore. Right away, Chris Berman makes a change. Kayla Joe Davis coming back in. So Moore picking up her third foul. And with all the fouls tabulated at a rate similar to the yep. Minnehaha game. <laughs> We're going to have to keep an eye on this. Rachel Kowicki scoring. And we talked about Maranatha's tough non-conference schedule as Kowicki makes both free throws. Holy Angels in the first month of the season playing four teams who reached the 3A tournament a year ago. Sammy Payne leans in and scores. Payne has helped keep Maranatha in contention. 
Another foul. Ooh. And another basket for Kaylee Vanderwerf, who's up to 12 points. Not playing like a freshman tonight. The foul's on Kayla Jo Davis, her second. I'll tell you what's really scary, Mike, is that both Vanderwerf and Oberg are only, are only going to get better and better. And to continue our discussion from earlier, we were talking about the stability among the coaching staff. They also believe switching from the old Minnesota Conference to the Tri-Metro a few years ago helped them out because now they're playing against schools with a similar enrollment, similar yeah. size. And Vanderwerf can't hit the free throw. So a better conference draw for Holy Angels. Semi pain for three. It. Banks it in. Rattles it in. However it goes in, it's three points. And it's a six point margin. Another foul. And that's going to be the third on Davis. And Maranatha really needs to clean up some of these miscues here on defense. They're get, they do, but and, they're and making you know, a lot of contact. And you know, here's the thing, Mike. You know, we're coming in close to the minute and a half range here left in the first half. And if the Mustangs can stay within that five to seven point range, you know, I hate to use the term moral victory, but Chris, Bim I think Chris Berman would have to feel good about where he's at, considering everything that's happened here in this first half of them. I'll tell you what's keeping the margin close, the free throw shooting. Holy Angels struggling. They blank. They're 10 of 19. And all these missed points are keeping this margin closer than Holy Angels would like it to be. There's some other factors, of course, but you go 10 of 19 in the first half alone when you've been getting to the line with regularity. It's hard to pull away with that kind of conversion rate. They'll get two more. Smestad will be called for the foul her second. Megan Meyer. And the free throw was continuing here for the Stars, Mike. While she's struggling from the line, one area she's thriving is community service. Received the Blue Service Award last year, volunteering over 40 hours. She misses both free throws, and Vanderwerf can't put it in. Holy Angels continuing to win the battle on the boards, though. And this reminds me of game five of the WNBA Finals back in October. Yeah. The Sparks using the boards to their advantage. Oh my goodness! Sammy Payne with an easy layup. Holy Angels went for the steal. Couldn't get a handle on it. And the deflection went to Payne. It's like in the NFL when the pass goes off a cornerback and into the hands of a wide open receiver. Vanderwerf can't respond. And with less than a minute to play, Maranatha can trim this four-point margin even further. Payne with the long skip. 15-footer rims out for number 23. Bounce pass, Vanderwerf, no! My goodness. Number 23 for the Mustangs is Macy Smith. Meanwhile, we'd like to welcome you to this game of hot potato. Smith can't hit another one. She's been open twice and blanked. She'll try for three. Got it. Bullseye! Wow. What a sequence of events here, Mike, coming down in this last minute for the Maranatha Christian Mustangs. All Angels. Good if it goes. No. And Maranatha makes it a one-point game at halftime, 34-33, thanks to a three-pointer from Macy Smith. A wild crazy frenetic 18 minutes uh, you ready for another 18 Alex well I tell you what I don't think anyone could have really scripted this 
coming into this contest with fouls and turnovers galore for Maranatha Christian. Yet here they are, trailing by just one point with some clutch shots coming down the final stretch. Well, Alex and I will catch our breath. Meanwhile, we'll show you a performance from the Maranatha Christian Academy cheerleading squad. Watching high school girls basketball, Holy Angels leads Maranatha 34-33. And we're back after an entertaining halftime session with the cheerleading squad and a Survivor contestant uh, came in and there was a Survivor-themed game for the Maranatha fans. And Mike Bean and Alex Nagel, we have survived 18 minutes of a frenetic showdown between the Maranatha Christian Academy Mustangs and Holy Angels Stars. Holy Angels leads 34-33 as we get ready to start the second half. Frenetic is about the right word to describe that first half, Mike. Just crazy almost. You know, I think when you look at this game from strictly a Maranatha Christian standpoint, they've got to find a way to clean up some things. Number one, the turnovers. Secondly, and probably just as important, they've got to cut down on the fouls, Mike. Unofficially, Kaylee Vanderwerf leads the Stars with 12 points. Megan Meyer has seven. Those are your notables there. Sammy Payne and Jacqueline Jarnett providing most of the offense for Maranatha. Payne has 14 points. Jarnett has eight. But it was a three-pointer from Macy Smith to make this a one-point yeah. game going into half. Now, one thing to monitor as we get ready to start the foul situation. Elise Moore and Kayla Joe Davis have three each. And Maranatha, they put in 12 players tonight, but if they don't clean that up, they're going to run into deeper. some problems. Yeah, absolutely. And then you look at Holy Angels. You know, you've got to make free throws. 10 of 19 unofficially in the first half. And not a good start for the Mustangs as Kylie Post commits the traveling violation. Kylie Post, I think, got a little too far underneath into no man's land there, and she didn't have anywhere to go. One of many big games taking place tonight. Hopkins and St. Michael Albertville are in their annual series. Jacqueline Jarnett strips the ball away from Tal Huber and gets the coast-to-coast -coast finish. And that's that soft touch that Jacqueline Jarnett has. It was a soft touch that was missing from most of Maranath in the first half. But as we said, it's their first game of the year. What you see now is not what you'll see come February. Oberg, spin move, can't put it in. And Tal Huber might Get a bruise or two after that tumble. Well, and that's what Maranatha Christian has to do. They've got to be able to box out and get and fight for these rebounds. And you saw that there. And Kylie Post. 
forcing the jump. No foul was called. There was no contact, so it made sense. But still, Tal Huber took a thud. We could hear it all the way up here. If you just joined us, Maranatha wearing their red alternate uniforms. A new feature for this season. Joining the likes of Minneapolis North, their boys team also sports an alternate uniform. You don't see that often at the high school level. Oberg gets a tough layup to fall. Well, I tell you, good job by Oberg there because once she got the ball, the entire Maranatha Christian team seemed to collapse right around her. And a foul on Maranatha. Foul on Megan Meyer of Holy Angels, excuse me. Semi Payne missing the three pointer. Post. Oh. Drains the runner. I'll tell you, that was a great effort by Post retrieving that ball, which could have been an easy turnover, and then driving into the lane and getting the soft touch to put it in. Maranatha getting a second Mustangs chance. Lead. Maranatha getting a second chance to look to fall. Thompson for three. Too strong. And Maranatha can add to this lead. They're up 37-36. Post. Kick out. Jarnett. Three ball. Cannot hit from the corner. And a foul as Oberg corralled the rebound. Oberg just a one-sport athlete, but thanks to cheating at your breakdown book, I discovered that she also enjoys music and writing. Wants to get into the medical field someday. Jasrin Thompson, she picks up her fourth personal foul. We may not see much of her until later in this half. And that's a costly one for the Mustangs. It's going to test her depth for sure. Olbert missing another layup. Jarnett looking to leak out. Semi Payne. Ooh. Always tough when you're right underneath the basket. Olbert will dish it off Ooh. and Megan Meyer came close to traveling, but that's a layup. Tall Huber intercepts. And unable to hit the 14 footer was Thompson. And Semi Payne will let it go out of bounds. That will allow Smestad to check in. Well, the wild and wacky action continuing here in the second half. You thought maybe things might just settle down a little bit here in the opening moments of the second half, but not a chance. Miscommunication. And Marietta turns it over again. This may not be the most pristine match I've ever seen, but when you look at the determination and grit of both teams, it's a shame that you won't see this kind of a matchup in the state tournament because Maranatha in A and Holy Angels in 3A. I would love to see a state tournament with these two. Oh, boy. Here comes Jarnick. Cannot get the bounce. And a dead ball rebound to Holy Angels. Holy Angels looking to... Stay undefeated. Maranatha playing their first game of the year. And Bierman told us when we had a chance to say hello at the St. Thomas tip-off that Maranatha may have one of the worst records since he took over as head coach and yet be one of the strongest contenders in the Class A field. Oberg, elbow J, is strong. Both teams playing like it's a state tournament game, though. Oh, boy. Jarnett, elbow, off the mark. Oberg 
Could be on her way to a double-double here. If she can get a few more points in her direction. Vanderwerf draws the foul on the least more, and that is her fourth. Chris Berman doing the surrender Cobra over there on the sideline, knowing full and well with what the situation is. So Vanderwerf, who has struggled, will shoot two more. Ooh. And the free throw woes continue for the Holy Angel star here. So Payne will check in for more. Semi Payne, a big fan of the Food Network, I might add. These are the things you learn in the breakdown book. Yes. <laughs> Vanderwerf gets it back in. But Holy Angels shooting just over 50%. Maranatha unofficially just three of four, but they only trail by two. Well, Kylie Post will get a chance to shoot two. Well, good job by Kylie Post. She saw the opening. And drawing the foul on Vanderwerf. Post adding some strength. In fact, Bierman feels she's stronger than she was at any point last year, which he said is a strong statement coming from him, considering that she made the all-tournament team a year ago in the Class A bracket. She splits. And it's a one-point game again, 39-38, in favor of the Holy Angel Stars. And a reach-in foul. That's going to be on Sammy Payne, I believe. No. On Smestad, that is her third. So two players with four fouls and one with three. Here we go. Maranatha forcing the steal. Sammy Payne, no. And she tried to avoid the ball. Unable to do so. And that was the right call. The ball did not touch the ground before making contact with Payne. Chris Berman pleading his case over there to no avail. Holy Angels looking for the run out. And they can't get, quite get the pass in, but Tal Huber was trailing from behind and she scores. Jarnett lost the dribble and it goes right to Ober. Skip to Vanderwerf. Can't get the bounce. And Marinatha escapes the Vanderwerf trap. Sammy Payne oh. drains the runner. Timeout, Marinatha. Nice touch here by Sammy Payne on that drive and layup. And it's a one-point game again, 41-40. Sammy Payne with 16 points. You know, I think the one thing about when you look at this Holy Angels program and this team, the big difference this year, I think, for them, even without a dynamic player such as, uh, you know, what we saw last year, the difference this year is, I don't think they'll, they won't be able to fly under the radar like they did last year because nobody really expected them to be in the state tournament, much less win it. It was something we discussed at the St. Thomas tip-off and again reflecting on the conversation I had with Dan Woods, the head coach at Early Angels. Uh, he felt this team was good enough to get to state, but everybody was looking at Orno and Hutchinson and Caster Manorville and we all know Orno and Casa Manorville were knocked out before the state tournament round. And again, when you lose a great player like Laura Bagwell Katalinik, it's you have to have your other players step up. And I think they will. They've been doing a good job of that through three games. Destiny Oberg averaging 18 a game coming into this one. No foul. And Kayla Joe Davis had the rebound but lost the ball. Thompson, yes. And that's going to be a foul on Rachel Kowicki. 12.35 left in the second half and a three-point game. Kowicki, the eighth grader. One of two eighth graders on this other, Holy Angels team. The other being Vasilero, and as we said, 
with Holy Angels, they believe if you're good enough to play, it doesn't matter what grade you are, they'll give you a chance to showcase your talent on varsity. About a week ago when we covered this Holy Angels team, I likened them to baby-faced veterans. And that's what this group is. Oberg will shoot two. Oberg just so strong down low. It's tough to move her when she establishes position down low. And that's the fourth personal foul charged to Kayla Joe Davis. So Maranatha has three players with four fouls. Tegan Thompson now checking in for the Mustangs. Another new face for the program and Marinette has subbed in so many players, I don't have any room left in my score sheet. <laughs> Usually you go eight or nine deep, not 13. Not unless it's a blowout, but the high tally of fouls necessitates such a strategy. Pain in trouble. Gets out of it, and Marinatha avoids incurring the 10-second violation. Post. Uh, Payne too far underneath. It looked like they had Smestad open for the kickout. Instead, it's another fast break deuce for Megan Meyer. Stores lead back up to six now. Megan Meyer loves the transition. Kickball, and here comes Sophia Montgomery. Sammy Payne got a little too far under the basket on that last shot she put up on that previous Mustang possession. Ooh, Hoper batted that away. Meyer for three, short. Post, racing through, and Tegan Thompson couldn't corral it. Thompson, backpedals, Vanderwerf is open. Good defense by Payne to stay on her. Two on one for the Mustangs. Oberg says, I don't think so. Well, I tell you what, Marinatha Christian, so far tonight, dodging more bullets than Bonnie and Clyde ever did, Mike. Or James Bond, for that matter. Semi Payne, low arcing shot, but it goes in. Oberg inside. Good feed from Vanderwerf. And Oberg has nine points. Montgomery. Ooh. Vanderwerf with the rejection. Using that 6-1 frame to swap that ball away. 6-1 frame, big wingspan. And Oberg with another steal. Thompson oh. drains it. That was a tough layup. She was at a bad angle and a little off balance when she put that up, but she put up with just enough touch to make it fall. Payne tripped by Vanderwerf. And Kaylee will be hit with her second foul. You brought up the graduation, of course, of Bagwell Katalinich and how that will impact this team. Reflecting on that with Joe Berg in my pregame conversation with them, said everyone's buying into the roles, and that was an element that took shape a year ago. 
Because in his words, you can't have five LeBron James type players. And I certainly don't see that out of Holy Angels in this game. Thompson for three. Short. And a push foul is called to Montgomery. Dan Woods having a quick word with Isabel Henry. And you're going to see Elise Moore go back in. Interesting call here from Chris Bierman. Elise Moore with four fouls. And Jasmine Thompson also going in. I think Bierman feels that he has to roll the dice here a little bit, Mike. Down eight here. About the nine and a half minute mark of this second half. Doesn't want to let get this thing get too far down. And look for Holy Angels. to try to bring the pressure on Moore. And oh. Oberg wedges it. And everyone has a laugh. Ball so, <laughs> the ball so tired it wanted to take a timeout. Well, we don't give points for the officials. <laughs> but that was a great pass though. Great bounce pass inside. One of the more fortunate bounces for either side tonight. Jarnett comes up with the steal. Elise Moore inside. It was nearly a broken play, but Ella Burr gets two points out of it. And the assist will go to Elise Moore. 50 to 44. Oberg left alone. And she has 11 points after that deuce. Elise Moore calling for it. Post doesn't see her. She's going to go up against Oberg. And that's not a good idea. Elise Moore wow. with the rebound and the putback. I don't know if she got a push off or not, but a clutch basket for the senior. And that's a foul on Ella Berg. That will be her third. And that is Marinatha's last to give. Ella Berg, the sophomore, I tell you, she used her small frame to slither into that paint, but she made the most of her opportunity. Berg and Montgomery, close friends of Maranatha, played on traveling teams for years, and as you may know, my history with them goes way back, signing autographs on various collectibles of theirs, and it's an annual tradition, so at some point this season, I'll have to find something to sign. I talked to Sophia about it. She said she's pretty sure she still has those collectibles. She just doesn't know where they are inside her house, but they're somewhere. Jarnett, good defense. That denies Rachel Kowicki, and Vanderwerf will be hit with her third personal foul. I think that's going to be number two on Vanderwerf, I believe. Three. No, three now. That's why I've got the score sheet, Alex. I crunch the numbers so you don't have to. 8.15 left in regulation. But that's not to say the game will end at that point. Travel. Yep. Just took that extra step. And that happens a lot, especially in high school athletics players. They get the pass and they start moving before dribbling the ball. It's a common miscue. So Holy Angels with a slight upper hand. Emphasis on slight. They get out of that jam. And Tall Huber is fouled. I think that that's will be on, uh... the first to Macy Smith. But that puts Holy Angels in the bonus. So Tall Huber. Once the officials recognize this, we'll go to the line. Smith, another rate grader out there. Smith 
got on the varsity team as a seventh grader a year ago. Tall Huber, over the summer, went on an African trip with her grandparents. Wow. Not too often you get to cross the Atlantic like that. And she gets the front end. One of the most athletic players on the Holy Angel Stars. And something we haven't seen often, Holy Angels making both free throws. Sammy Payne with another fast break. She's up to 20. Charge for Elise Moore. Wow. A gutsy call on her part, but it pays off. She was established, and Tall Huber cannot believe it. And that not only is the third on Tall Huber, but that is the last foul to give for the Stars. And with 7.32 left, that's well, a lot of time. A, she went into a lot of traffic there, Mike. So both teams will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Payne didn't have enough space for a three. And Burr can't hit one. Montgomery scraps for the rebound. Payne draws a foul, fake the three again, and she'll shoot two. Well, as we saw in the latter stages of that wild and crazy first half, Maranatha Christian has the ability to score and score quickly. And how about Sammy Payne's performance to open the season? Last year, a lot of the attention went to the Jarnets, Elena and Jacqueline. Sammy Payne, I've got her at 21. Bierman joked that she'll likely end up at a Wisconsin D2 or D3 school, yeah. much like her sisters. She splits there. I'm sure there's a lot of Mayak schools that wouldn't mind having her either. A few of them might be watching this tape. Five-point game, seven minutes to go. Oberg shimmies past Moore, but can't put it in. Post was looking for the bounce pass to Moore. Now everyone dives for it. Maranatha gets out, and it's uh, the three! Rihanna Smestad with like her first field goal as a Mustang. Maranatha calls timeout, and it's a two-point game. Wow, and talk about scoring and scoring quickly. That's exactly what I was talking about, Mike. This really changed the complexion of this ball game. Just when you thought Holy Angels might be on the cusp of taking control of this one, right back comes the Mustangs. Brianna Smestad, one of the new additions, a sophomore. Likes to spend time with her extended family, also takes part in track. And Chris Bierman said Smestad was going to be one of the regular members off the bench in the rotation. Comes up with a huge basket there and Maranatha has withstood every Holy Angels attack up to this point. And remember, both teams are in the bonus. Still got any space left there on that scoring sheet you have? Well, plenty of space for points, uh, not necessarily for players. <laughs> but I don't mind it. This is a fun game. And we'll have plenty more coming your way throughout the rest of the season. What a start to this season for the Mustangs. And Holy Angels getting another high quality test in the early part of the season. There's that pressure defense again from Maranatha. Montgomery almost got that ball. 6.18 left. Far too much time for Holy Angels to play keep away. But they're displaying patience on this possession. Long skip to Tal Huber. Old Angels burning up some clock. 
They're going to look for a high quality shot and they're going to get one. But Emma Henry missed. And Maranatha cannot convert. Yep. Saw that all the way. She came with the elbow and got caught with it. Oberg shaking her head. Moore taking a pounding from Oberg, among others. Elise Moore also absorbed a charge from Tal Huber, so with four fouls, Elise Moore playing some heady defense here. And you're always wondering how a player will manage having four fouls. Kylie Post comes up short. 54-52 our score. Thompson, swish. She hits the 15-footer. No foul call, the collision between Post and Megan Meyer after Meyer forced the steal. Bain used up the dribble, looked for help, couldn't find it. And Ober takes it away. A couple of sloppy miscues here for the Mustangs at an inopportune time. And Vanderwerf will shoot too after drawing the foul on Payne. Well, a chance here now for Holy Angels to get a bit more breathing space. And that breathing space has been awfully hard to come by for the Stars here tonight, Mike. And for us, too. The largest lead for the Stars has been nine. A big free throw there. Holy Angels was shooting 56% before this trip. Kayla Joe Davis just checked in for Maranatha Christian. It would be intriguing to see how this match would be different had these teams played at the end of the season as opposed to the beginning, but you gotta start somewhere. Post missing the three. And Vanderwerf has a chance, or extended the lead to six. Holy Angels has a chance to extend that here. Tal Huber has a lane and draws the foul on Jarnett. Tal Huber with seven points. Only the second foul on Jarnett, considering how the foul situation is gone tonight for the Mustangs. She's done pretty well. But Maranatha. Needs to find some rhythm here in the final 421. They've come close. They led briefly here in the second half. Now the lead back up to seven. But that was short-lived, that lead, I should say. Jacqueline Jarnett drawing the foul. And that's on Tall Huber, her fourth. And even though we still have some time left, this does help Maranatha in the sense that it stops the clock. So Jacqueline Jarnett who has made the All-Tournament team every year since she joined the Mustangs. We'll have a chance to cut into this lead. If you're wondering, she misses not having her big sister in the Jarnet household. Elena, of course, at Monmouth. So no sibling rivalry there. There is a younger Jarnet who will take. Ooh, might have got away with a high dribble there. I was going to say there's another Jarnet who will don the uniform next year, Chloe. And Chris Spearman's really looking forward to putting air in there. But right now, he's got to work his way out of a seven-point deficit for his Mustangs. And Holy Angels looking to go to 4-0. Holy Angels, cognizant of the clock. They're going to let time tick away. And Oberg throws it away. 
Payne and Berg. No, Berg will not go back in, but he Semi Payne will. Payne the fulcrum of offense for the Mustangs with 21 points. I wouldn't be surprised if they look to feed her in this instance. That's a backcourt violation. Wow. And the reason for that, yep. Kylie Post did not cross the timeline when Jarnett passed the ball. She used up the dribble, tried to get rid of it. Post, as quick as she could, tried to cross the timeline, but was unable to do so. Yep. That's why the backcourt violation was called. It doesn't happen often. No, I was just going to say that isn't something that you see on a frequent basis. But they'll let that be a lesson to you future basketball aficionados. You have to cross the timeline to avoid the backcourt call. And that goes for dribbling or passing. So that gives Holy Angels a chance to eat up more time. With three minutes to go. Ooh. There was one that got away for the Mustangs. That ball went through, I think, four red jerseys. And Oberg stutter steps and gets a big bucket. Will that be the dagger? A foul on Megan Meyer. Nowhere near foul trouble at this point, but that puts Jacqueline at the line and stops only the clock at 240. Only her second. This is where Elena Jarn or Jacqueline Jarn, excuse me, has to make good on these two attempts here from the charity strike. If you're wondering how Maranatha felt after a blowout loss to Goodhue in the Class 8 championship last year, it didn't really bother this group that much. And Bierman said that was because Maranatha wasn't expected to get there. Right. He said the one that hurt was 2015 when they lost to Ada Bora. But he said the challenge, instead of winning the gold medal, that's not his primary focus. He wants to get more out of his players than they thought was possible. Jarnett gets her own miss. She'll take the three. That would have been a big bucket for the Mustangs. And Holy Angels can go on another run out. Thompson clutches and scores. That might do it. And once again, Oberg with another steal in the post. And it looks like Holy Angels will escape with a win. Not as high scoring as the previous one, but a win nonetheless. And give credit to the defense. We'll give a lot of credit to, to the both Oberg and Vanderwerf for getting those important points down low. And even if Holy Angels does hang on, we got to give credit to these two schools oh, yeah. for taking the risks they have in the early part of the season. And at least more will go out. And you see that more often, especially with the Mercy Rule, discouraging blowouts to inflate the records. But right. it's always fun when you see coaches, whether it's a home-and-home -home series or Holy Angels calls timeout or even just a one-time matchup, it's always fun to see high-profile games like this. Yeah, exactly. And, and as we noted earlier, for Maranatha, this is a great primer to find out who they are right. and what they have to do to reach the next level. Well, and as you said earlier, Mike, you know, I think by the time the first of the year rolls around, you'll see a lot of the mistakes that the Mustangs made tonight cleaned up. And they have a, lo a lot more coming their way, as we noted. They get Matamidi on Thursday, Mount Narambule on Saturday, and they play St. Croix Lutheran a week from today. They'll definitely be, be battle-tested come January. And some other opponents along the way include Red Lake. They'll be going to Hopkins, part of the Super 60 Showcase event. And who knows what awaits them in the MCAA. Yep. You recall the section final. They had to sweat out a thrilling game with Lester Prairie. 
they certainly will be the favorite to win the conference title again. Payne from the corner. That's strong. Jarnett, that's short. And once Maranatha rediscovers their rhythm and their efficiency, as we've seen over the last couple of years, they'll be fine. Oh, yeah. They took an extra week before starting their season to get a few more practices without Elena under their belt. And they want to simulate what the Class A state tournament will be like. Goldberg to Vanderwerf on the back door. And pushes Vanderwerf's total up to 17. A nice exclamation point for her. And Ober picks up her fourth, but it will be inconsequential at this point. Maranatha made a valiant effort. Led briefly in the second half. Once they become more efficient and clean up those miscues that you talked about, especially in passing, they'll be tough to stop. Oh, yeah. And you and I saw this at the St. Thomas tip-off, and I saw more of this at the Hamlin tip-off event. Well, you know, and the two other players that I was so impressed with tonight for Marinath of Christian is Kylie Post and Sammy Payne. Sammy Payne really stepped up in an eye felt. A strong first game for Sammy Payne with 21, but it won't be enough. Timeout, Holy Angels with 111 left. Just a quick score uh, to pass along tonight. Another result, uh, Park Center easily uh, dispatched uh, Coon Rapids in their Northwest Suburban Conference opener up in Coon Rapids. Not surprising there. No. In the case of Park Center. We'll be heading over to the other school in Brooklyn Park a couple of times later this season. Be looking forward to that. <laughs> And Holy Angels, their next opponent is Bloomington Kennedy, a team that is rebuilding after the graduation of the Shayla Wright Ponder and Tyra Spencer. They'll get Minneapolis Washburn after that. And then they'll get Como Park, a team that made the tournament last year, but right. again, looking for a new identity themselves after Andre graduated, Andre Adams. Yep. Uh, I guess the next date, if you want to circle one, would be their road game at Hutchinson. Oh, that, and that would be a, be a good on Thursday. One. And then you'll get a chance to see them over at Hill Murray for our, a holiday tournament that will take place over the course of three days. And then they'll get into Tri Metro Conference play. Holy Angels undefeated in the Tri Metro last year and figure to get out of there unscathed again. One ten on the clock. Interesting to watch Oberg's ritual at the free throw line before she shoots. It's important to have that ritual, I think. You know, you get into a pattern, you get into a rhythm, and it really helps you. Head coach Dan Woods and his staff breathing a little bit easier now with the game in hand, but it wasn't easy. It never is when you're facing Maranatha. Macy Smith with another triple. It's a nine point margin, but I don't think there's enough time. Macy Smith, the eighth grader, my goodness. Gary Ruff is the old horse on Dan Woods' staff there at Holy Angels, uh, Gary Ruffsfold uh, was an assistant coach at St. Kate's under Tim Kayer for a number of years there at St. Kate's and then assumed a head job there in 2008. Megan Thompson to shoot two more.
and she makes both. Holy Angels to close out at Smith that time. Jarnett, Good. she hits a three. Got it back to 10 points. Well, Chris Bierman will call his last time out. Chris Bierman trying to pull out, pull out all the stops here. <laughs> Well, they're coaching like it's a state tournament game. Seconds left. They're coaching as if it's a state tournament game, and especially in the early part of the season, you're going to see that style of determination. They're not going to let up and just let the clock run out. They know that this is a vital stepping stone in their development this year. Well, and recall the Mountain Iron Yule game from the state tournament semifinals this last year. I mean, that game all but looked like it had the daisy put on it. And instead, Maranatha came with a marigold. That they did. And remember, Mountain Iron Buell had that runaway win in the first meeting. Yeah. Of course, these two won't get that second meeting because they're in separate classes. But these are the types of games that instill so many lessons and techniques that you wouldn't learn facing lower-level right. schools. Right. And Bierman, he was excited. to advance with this kind of a schedule. No one was apprehensive about it. He said, I want a challenge and I want it early. He certainly got one out of Holy Angels tonight. And there's plenty to praise for both sides. I mean, how about Elise Moore taking a couple of charges with oh, four yeah, fouls. Absolutely. Semi Payne with the steal off the deep inbound. You see Holy Angels closing out on the perimeter. Kylie Post can't hit the three. Jacqueline Dronit with the save. 30 seconds left. Dronit again. Can't bank it in. Well, I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the uh, NCAA tournament game this last March between you and I and Texas A&M. <laughs> Who can forget that one? But again, you have to like that Maranatha oh, absolutely. is playing as if it's the first possession. Because this game really isn't going to hurt the loser in terms of seeding. It will certainly help the winner. Wow. And that's the third charge taken by Elise Moore and Destiny Yoberg may have fouled out of the game as a result. Inconsequential at this point, but she did. But they definitely made life miserable for her tonight in the winning effort. But what a defensive effort by Elise Moore! And how many players do you know would take that chance with four fouls? Not many. That alone deserves props, even though it's not going to be a win. That's going to be a great confidence builder not just for more but the rest of this oh, team. Absolutely. Seeing that out there, seeing someone with that level of fearlessness. Yep. That's the those are the intangibles you can't measure by points alone. Jarnett will not hit a three and that should do it here. Five seconds. Old Angel throws it away. But a lot to be proud of for both coaches. There's can only be one winner, but if you're Holy Angels, you're glad you're going to get out of here at 4-0. And if you're Maranatha, we've got some things to build on. But how about that defense where Elise Moore? That was the highlight from their end. Well, but we do have a final here. Holy Angels goes to 4-0. 70-61 is our final. What a way to start the season, though, for Maranatha. Oh, oh, I tell you what, I'm... Uh I may have to get a good meal just to try and catch my breath here tonight, Mike. I tell you what. Over at Slim's, right? Yeah. I'm glad I had. That's, uh, that's had, the go-to spot in Brooklyn Park. <laughs> I'm glad I had my Pepsi with me. But, <laughs> you know, as you said, you know, I think this is an encouraging start despite the loss for Maranatha Christian. There's a lot to build on. You know, some things they need to get better at, too. But, as I said earlier, I think by January, Chris Berman will have this team where he wants them to be. Well, PepsiCo will appreciate your plug. <laughs> Meanwhile, we'll try to get a word with some of the Holy Angels players as they go to 4-0 with a 70-61 win. You're watching high school girls basketball. Holy Angels stays undefeated.
And I'm joined by Kaylee Vanderwerf and Destiny Oberg, uh, the Twin Towers for Holy Angels. And uh, Kaylee, much has been made about uh, you being the newcomer and learning from the baby face veterans like Destiny. Uh, how is that coming along and how did that show tonight? It's good. She really helps me with going strong and making good moves and setting a good example. And you had a couple of blocks down there. Uh, how are you uh, getting more comfortable in the post? Um, just getting used to playing with the girls is really nice and feeling where I fit in is getting a lot better. And what do you make of such a wild frenetic game with Maranatha? I mean, there were many times where you're diving for loose balls and it looked more like hot potato than basketball. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, like all the excitement, it was hard to hear sometimes, so that was a lot harder to have control, but it was still a really fun game. And what do you make of that kind of atmosphere? Because you weren't on last year's state tournament team with this group, so how do you think that helps you get more acclimated to environments like this? Um, it was a lot different than what I'm used to, but it was like very energizing, having everybody be so loud, even if they were for the other team. It helped a lot. And Destiny, you did foul out, but you had a strong performance in the paint before then. But just tell me, how tough was Elise Moore in the late stages? She has four fouls and she's picking up charges with no apprehension at all. Um, it was good because she's a good competitor and pushed me to play harder. And I feel like we both had a good matchup for it. And you were on this team last year when you opened the season with Maranatha. And what do you make of this rivalry over the last couple of years and how frenetic and how crazy <laughs> these games have been? Um, it's been tough because we always go at each other and it's just kind of a battle, I guess. And speaking of battles, uh, you were certainly battling down low, not just with blocks and rebounds, but you were even getting a few steals. So what do you credit to your strong defensive effort? Um, knowing that I can trust my teammates that if I get out of position that they'll be back there to cover up for me. And what have you learned and what are you more comfortable with in your fourth game of the season compared to your first game? Um, I feel like we've gotten more into the groove and we're not as rusty and we're getting a little more trust in each other as we go on. And how is Kaylee Vanderwerf as a student of the post? Uh, she's really good and I know I can trust her and we play really well together. We throw high lows and it's good to know that we can do that. And anyone who want to say hi to? Um, just my mom and my grandma and grandpa. And anyone that you might have missed the last time we were here at Destiny? Um, same people, Fabo, Sup, and my mama. That's it. Always got to say hello to your mother. <laughs> Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll see if you can stay undefeated, but uh, what an effort, what a performance. Uh, you made this one a lot of fun to cover. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Thanks. That was Kaylee Vanderwerf and Destiny Oberg from the Holy Angel Stars, and that wraps up our coverage here for Maranatha Christian Academy. For our entire crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching High School Girls Basketball.